Hi, Charlie Kosorek, Jack Bench Woodworking, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, woodworking rasps. Uh, I use these a lot in my work. I have a variety. I'm a little um, <laughs> fanatical about them. I have a very inexpensive rasp that work really well. I have very expensive rasps that I don't like at all and I never use. I have three different sets of needle rasps, um, everything in between. I use them a lot and like I said, I'm maybe a little nutty about them. <laughs> anyway, um, on the high end, I have, um, I can't pronounce these French names at all, please forgive me. I have the Aureu, A-U-R-I-O-U. These are the gold standard uh, hand-stitched rasps. These are fantastic. Um, and uh, if you're really serious about uh, doing a lot of rasp work, they are worth the money. Um, now let me back up. There's one thing I forgot to mention is there's something about what, what makes a good rasp. And uh, there's two things. Um, uh, one of them is that I want, when I'm rasping, I want an even pattern across the wood. Uh, I don't want one tooth digging in uh, and leaving a, 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 a deep gouge. I want a nice even pattern. So that's a very important thing that I look for. Um, and the other thing is, uh, it seems to me that, and just my opinion, that the fine rasps, the real fine ones that, you know, they're not quite sandpaper, they're a little more than a file, but the ones that give a nice, smooth, fine finish, those are the ones that are hard to come by. Um, and, and those are the ones that I'm willing to spend extra money on. A coarse rasp, now there are good ones and bad ones. You can still have uneven teeth and uneven um, patterns with um, a coarse rasp, but um, it's less important to me to have a super expensive or super high quality in a coarse rasp because I'm going to be, you know, cleaning that up, uh, per, assuming that it doesn't dig in too awful much. Um, so I'll go through these and I'll tell you uh, in a minute here uh, which one I think is just an amazing, amazing bargain. So um, it used to get the uh, Nicholson, Nicholson number 49, Nicholson 50, those used to be the standard uh, in the woodworking, and they were excellent, just excellent. And, you know, not cheap by any means, but not outrageously expensive. Unfortunately, uh, I've heard many times in the last few years that uh, they moved their uh, manufacturing somewhere to another country, and the quality went way down, and um, uh, a lot of vendors quit selling these because the quality got so bad. So unfortunately, Nicholson's, unless you can find an old one that's in good shape, probably not a good option. Um, the Shinto Rasp. Now Shinto Rasp, this is one that's very, very popular. Some of the best woodworkers I can think of recommend these. I have another opinion. <laughs> I personally uh, don't use this very much. Um, these are great. They're uh, like a bunch of um, saw blades, almost like hacksaw blades that are kind of woven together. Uh, they don't clog up. They're very, it's got a coarse teeth on one side. It's got fine teeth on the other side. And uh, it would seem that this is ideal. They can cut very fast. Um, and they're not terribly expensive. You know, I don't know what these go for, but they're not you're not out of the, they're mid-range, um, low to mid-range uh, price. My problem with these is that although they, uh, they cut well, the way that they're um, configured, this blade on the outside edge, a lot of times when I'm rasping, I'll roll it over a little too far and this outside edge, outside edge blade, the teeth on here, will dig in and, and leave a gouge. And for that reason, I don't use this very often. Otherwise, I would love this and would recommend it, but personally, I do not recommend the Shinto. Um, the uh, uh, micro, microplane, uh, I call them the cheese graters. These are really quite nice. Um, the problem with these is they're not very durable. I've, I've broken the, bl the blades in half when I got too rough with them. Uh, they, they wear out and, um, and they're, you know, considering the longevity that you get out of these, 
Um, they're not horribly expensive, but given how the longevity of them, I would say, you know, that makes these uh, not a great bargain. Um, I have uh, a dragon rasp. Now these are really, I love the dragon rasp. You get these through uh, Stumac. Uh, they're very nice. They're uh, uh, medium to high price, um, 60 to 80 dollars I think for one of these, 50 to 7, somewhere in there. Um, uh, they're really nice. I like the shape. They've got an extra wide on the bottom. They come to a nice point so you can uh, really, um, on the, with the back, you can get some nice um, shallow curves out of them, uh, nice fair curves. Um, and they're available in a nice fine teeth. This is, this is a good rasp. Um, I wouldn't, I would say, yeah, if you're in looking for a good mid-priced rasp, uh, this is a good, a good one to go with. Um, and uh, like I was saying, the, the Aerios, those are uh, the gold standard. They're very expensive. Another French rasp that I tried out, um, again, I can't, I don't speak French, L-I-O-G-I-E-R. Logier. I think um, I think Woodcraft might be carrying these now. Uh, this was these are some of the most expensive rasps that I uh, purchased, and I hate it. I absolutely hate this rasp. Uh, the teeth grab so much that it's hard to um, uh, you know it's hard to use. And so I hate this rasp. I never use it. Mo one of the most expensive ones I ever purchased. Um, needle rasps. I use needle rasps a lot. I have a, a set of the Aerios, um, incredibly expensive for these little tiny little rasps. They're like 40 bucks a piece and you get a set of four. Yeah, do the math, that adds up. Um, I've got a, a, an Italian set and it starts with a C. Cu karate. Uh, the Karate um, rasps are uh, about a third the price of the um, uh, Aerials, and uh, they're pretty good, but uh, they're not as fine. You can't get them in as fine of a uh, pattern. And so I use these two, but they're but my first choice is to go to the uh, Aerials. Uh, the Karates, I also bought this uh, uh, little short rasp, and this has got a super, super fine pattern on it. And I love this one. I love this. But um, medium expensive. This little rasp, I don't know, is probably about 60 bucks. I'm not sure. Um, so those are decent. Those Italian rasps are decent. And there are other brands out there. Uh, I, you know, I just don't happen to have every single one on the market. I've got a lot. But I, I purchased um, these um, golden rasps. That's, the, that's what they call them, golden rasp. And I got these on Amazon. They don't, they're so cheap you can't even buy one. You have to buy sets of two or three. Uh, these are fairly coarse. And um, uh, the set of these together is like $10, $10 or $12 for a set of two. And it's like, I don't know, maybe 15 bucks for a set of three. I don't know why I would need three because um, they're, they're about the same uh, pattern. They're just different sizes. Um, but these are fantastic. Uh, they, they cut very quickly. They're, they, they, they work, they're smooth. And um, yeah, I, I, for the price, oh my gosh, I can see no reason, although I've never purchased a coarse hand-stitched one. I've always, you know, looked for the fine, as I mentioned before, for those reasons. Um, but as far as a coarse rasp, pff, golden rasp on Amazon. I will have an affiliate link in the description of this video if you want to check it out. Um, these are just excellent, uh, and especially for the price. They're just, I, to me, the best bargain in woodworking. So um, that's my take on rasps, uh, good, bad, and ugly. And uh, I hope you like this video. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good junk. And um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this.